right, what shall we talk about today? Not batch cooking, that's for sure. Right, so, oh, hi Lily. Hi everyone, it's Liz. I hope you're all doing well. A bit of a change of scenery today. I'm here in my living room. I share a space with Andy and he's currently in a meeting. So no um, vlogging from the sewing room for me today. Hopefully we won't be too distracted with background noise. I do have some fairly noisy neighbors who are currently shouting over the street. Um, so hopefully you can't hear too much of that, but let's get on with it, shall we? So I'm sure I'm not alone in that January was quite a tough month. Uh, we're in the midst of lockdown three here in the UK. And, and with the dark days and you know all the festivities of Christmas are done with it kind of felt a bit bleak really around these parts and as such I didn't really get that much sewn I've just really struggled to find my mojo when I did cut something out to make it it ended up going wrong horribly wrong and yeah, I just I haven't really felt the motivation. But as usual, I reached out to my Instagram followers and they let me know that I really wasn't alone. Um, when I asked them if anyone had seen my sojo, a lot of people suggested that maybe it had gone out for a drink with theirs. So let's hope everyone's sojo is together having a good time down the pub. You may be wondering what's going on with this strange little hobbit hole down here. Lily's actually in her bed and I don't want to disturb her so I haven't moved it. I think those of you who own cats will understand what a rare thing it is for cats to actually use the bed that you've bought for them. If you listen very carefully you might actually also hear her snoring <laughs> through my mic. She's really loud. So let's get on with actually talking about some sewing. I did do some sewing in January, but it did kind of eke through into February. I sewed myself some ginger jeans and anyone who followed my 2021 plans will know that this was on the list. I did buy this black denim from eBay, which was advertised as stretch, but it's not, now that I've made them, it's probably not stretchy enough. Um, I really enjoyed the way that these went together. I thought that the fly instructions in particular were super easy. Um, I've got very lost with fly um, directions in the past. Dawn Jeans, I'm looking at you. I also talked about on my Instagram that I was having really big struggles with top stitching thread. So top stitching thread, the Gutterman top stitch thread is on a green spool, but then I found a little tip on Green Line Studios blog that said to use either Gutterman Mara 30, which I believe is like an um, industrial or trade brand, and if you couldn't get hold of Mara 30 to use the Gutterman Extra Strong, which is on a light grey spool. So I got some of that, and the difference between that and top stitching thread, even though it's doesn't look that much lighter weight. I mean it is, but doesn't look that much lighter weight. The difference is like day and night, I had no problems with top stitching thread fraying or snapping. My machine wasn't complaining and clicking like it was gonna jam up every two seconds. Highly recommend if you're gonna top stitch jeans, look for Gutterman Extra Strong. Don't bother with the green spool top stitch. So about these gingers, I really love the way they went together the construction was super easy however i have some issues with the fit so i made view a which is a low rise with a stove pipe leg and the reason why i went for that was because i have chunky legs and i thought what i'd rather do is cut the stove pipe leg and sort of slim it down and take it in along the leg where i need to Especially because not only do I have chunky legs, I also have knock knees, so my legs kind of bend in a little bit. That said, I didn't have many problems with the legs. I managed to fit them to my liking, more or less. They're still a little bit loose around the ankle, but I do have a problem with gaping at the back. So when I tried them on and took a wedge out of the centre back, which is a alteration that 
is recommended as a quick and dirty fix for gaping on the Closet Core blog. Closet Core are the designers of this pattern. It hasn't really fixed the problem and they do say on the blog that doing that quick and dirty alteration can alter the pitch of the jeans. I'm not really sure what that means to be honest because I can't find any reference on the internet to pitch of the jeans but I can only assume that it means that if that's your butt, slightly curved in, and that's your front, it'll kind of tilt the jeans that way, which for me is not necessarily a bad thing because I have got a sway back and my pelvis does tilt. I don't know whether this is a thing that would exist had I not done that alteration, but the front of the waistband is gaping open at the front. So I think, that the issue is that when I took that wedge out, I also should have taken a, a wedge out of the waistband to make it more curvy. Um, I think that's what I should have done. And when I kind of try it on paper, it makes sense. So I think what I'm gonna have to do, because I can't cope with the gaping, it looks terrible and isn't really fixed with a belt either. I think what I'm gonna have to do, even though it's so painful, is take the waistband off, make an alteration to the waistband piece and see whether that works. So that's me gingers. Uh, sadly, that's all I sewed in January, apart from I did sew a hoodie for Andy but I don't really have any pictures of it. I don't want to ask him to model because it's a bit awkward. And um, to do a flat layer, I would have to be pretty much floating on the ceiling to get it all in shot. I didn't buy any patterns in January, but I did buy some fabric. So I know before you start that I did promise myself that I would sew more from my stash this year. Um, but sometimes you've got to buy stuff if you just don't have it and I have this thing in my head Which I'll talk about in a little bit that requires a lot of denim fabric um, And I don't have a lot of denim fabric in my stash I have the stuff that I made my gingers from which is very lightweight and very stretchy and I need something a little bit more kind of sturdy So I so I did buy some denim, but what I did was I bought some offcuts from eBay which felt a little bit more uh, sustainable. So I bought some blue denim offcuts. They're really skinny offcuts. Um, I think they're only about 80 centimeters wide but they are very long. So one of them's like 2.3 meters and the other one's about four meters I think. Um, and it's fairly, you know, good quality. It's thicker than the stuff that I made my gingers out of and it's more importantly rigid as well. So I have big plans for this. This all needs to go through my overlocker before I put it through the wash. One of the other things that I bought was more denim. I know, so again, that denim that I made the gingers out of is not quite stretchy enough so I tried to find something that was a little bit heavier and a bit more stretchy. I, I think I've succeeded, it feels a bit more stretchy, not massively stretchy, certainly nothing like my ready to wear jeans are in terms of stretch, but a little bit better. So I have some black denim fabric as well. And then last but not least, the most exciting fabric purchase is this which is a French terry and I actually had this printed up myself and I had this printed before I made my promise not to buy more fabric. I actually placed this order back at the beginning of December and this was a really exciting collaboration with a designer who goes by the handle of Always Tired Co on Instagram. His real name is Sean and um, I think he's about as excited about this collaboration as I am. It's so cool. It's like a tattoo design with these death head hawk moths, um, eyes, some old school um, roses on there and some tiger's heads which look a little bit like uh, 
Nicole's famous tiger head. And it's great. The French Terry itself, I had printed up by uh, Splashings of Fabric. Sean very kindly provided the digital file for free in return for stuff he could use in his portfolio. So I have big plans for this and I kind of want to keep them secret squirrel because it's going to look so epic I want it to be a nice surprise. Um, but yeah, there's, there's things coming for this fabric. So let's move on to things I'm going to make in February. I'm very aware that it's a short month and I don't want to overload myself with promises of making things because uh, it's still dark and we're still in lockdown and I'm sure that my mental health is not really going to get leaps and bounds better anytime soon so I'm just going to be kind to myself and commit to the bare minimum of projects. So with that in mind, I think I have four key projects that I'd like to get done this month. That might still be pushing it, but we'll see. So the first thing I want to make is some Yanta overalls by Helen's Closet. I already have a pair of these in black and I wear them to death. They are really versatile. They can be dressed warmly, layered up for winter and they're also great for wearing in the summer with a little crop top underneath. So I have already cut these out in this checky pont, ponty, I asked this before, and somebody said it was ponty de Roma. All I need to do is sew them up. The reason I've procrastinated is because this ponty is quite bouncy and the none of it was pressing very well, so I wanted to wait until I got a tailor's clapper, which I have now. I'm very excited about that. So they're all cut out and ready and waiting to be sewn up, so hopefully this weekend I'll get round to that after I've edited this video. I also want to make myself a bodysuit. You may remember that I tried to make a Rowan bodysuit and it didn't go very well. So I've been thinking about turning the Nico dress that I made in December for wearing on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. I've been thinking about turning that into a bodysuit. And I had a bash at this and started filming it a couple of weeks ago and it went horribly wrong and the reasons will probably become apparent when I finally get around to finishing that video off. Um, so yeah, I'm going to film that and um, I'll put that up on my YouTube channel. I'm going to use this Mind the Maker rib. The reason why I'm using this is because I want to be able to make a direct comparison to the Rowan bodysuit and I don't feel like I can do that unless I use the exact same fabric. Um, which handles exactly the same. Oh, Lily's awake, you might be able to see her. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make a new turtleneck bodysuit. I also would like to make an Adrian bra, and that pattern is by Queen of Suburbia. I've not made it before, but it's a vertical seam demi-cup bra, which I'm quite excited about because I love a balconette demi-cup style bra. And then the reason why I bought so much of this denim fabric from eBay is because I would like to make myself an Ackerfeld coat. This is by a pattern company called Elba Textiles, who I've never heard of before, but Ricardo from season five of The Sewing Bee made a lovely sample of this and it looks absolutely gorgeous. As usual, I'm going to put a twist on it. I'm not going to give too many spoilers, but it will involve bleach and wax. And then the surprise project that I alluded to, I'm aware this is now five projects, that will probably run into March, simply because the project that I have in mind there is kind of a lighter weight layer. So it'll probably be better for when the weather starts to warm up. And there are only so many hours in an evening in which I can squeeze all of this sewing into. One last thing, you might be wondering why I'm sat next to this very old machine. This is a Singer 357K, which I recently bought. I absolutely love her. 
I'm not in the habit of anthropomorphizing machines, but she's definitely a she. I love her so much. Andy has agreed to fix her up for me, so we have bought some new feet. Um, literally, the feet that she came with are absolutely crumbling away to pieces, and she was just standing on screws. She also needs a really good oiling, but she runs like an absolute dream. Um, we've tried to change the light bulb out for um, an LED light bulb, but we got the bulb out once, tried to fit the LED bulb, it didn't fit, then had a nightmare getting the old bulb back in. So the old bulb's staying in there until it blows, basically. If the light bulb blows, I'll be looking for another way to light the working area because uh, it's too much hassle. She came with a lovely tin um, of feet and bobbins. So there's like a zipper foot and a free motion foot and some needles. And she came with the original instruction manual as well. So that actually includes all the servicing instructions and I'm absolutely in love. Um, I'm amazed how emotional it made me actually uh, getting hold of it and just looking through the instructions and stuff. She's obviously been very well loved by whoever owned her before because she's absolutely immaculate inside. There's not a scrap of lint or oil anywhere. Um, and she still runs, so she's a, she's a beaut. So that's it for this month in terms of my plans. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you're gonna be sewing this month. If you're new around these parts, it would be great if you'd stick around and watch another video, and I will see you next time.